Our next speaker is Christopher Hitchens. He's arguing against the motion. He is a writer, journalist, and commentator, particularly well known for his um, trenchant and uh, views and very original thinking. So, Christopher Hitchens, let us hear what you have to say. Your time starts now. Please make your way to the podium. I'm sorry to have to begin by disagreeing with His Grace. Um, if you're going to be a serious grown-up person and appear to defend the Catholic Church in public in front of an educated and literate audience, you simply have to start by making a great number of heartfelt apologies and requests for contrition and forgiveness. Now you might ask, you're fully entitled to ask, brothers and sisters, who am I to say that? Well, in the Jubilee millennium year of 2000, the Vatican spokesman, Bishop Piero Marini, said, explaining a whole sermon of apology given by His Holiness the Pope, given the number of sins we've committed in the course of 20 centuries, reference to them must necessarily be rather summary. Well, I think Bishop Marini had that just about right. I'll have to be summary too. His Holiness on that occasion, it was March the 12th, 2000, if you wish to look it up, begged forgiveness for, among some other things, the Crusades, the Inquisition, the persecution of the Jewish people, injustice towards women, that's half the human race right there, <laughs> and the forced conversion of indigenous peoples, especially in South America, the African slave trade, the admission that Galileo was right, <laughs> um, and for silence during Hitler's final solution, or Shoah. And it doesn't end there. There are smaller, but significant, um, equally significant, avowals of a very bad conscience. These have included uh, regret for the rape and the torture of orphans and other children in church-run schools in almost every country on earth, from Ireland to Australia. These are very serious matters, and they're not to be laughed off by references to the occasional work of Catholic Charities, but I draw your attention not just to the apologies, ladies and gentlemen, but to the evasive and euphemistic form that they take. Uh, Joseph Ratzinger, the current Pope, considered by some, by Catholics, to be the Vicar of Christ on Earth, in his comment, one of the few he's made on the institutionalization of rape and torture and maltreatment of children in Catholic institutions, he has said it's a very severe crisis which, which involves us, he said, in the following in the need for applying to these victims the most loving pastoral care. Well, I'm sorry. They've already had that. <laughs> and to say that this is the responsibility laid upon you by the, the horrific admission that you've already had to make is not accepting responsibility in any adult sense. The same euphemism comes in the term some Christians allowed themselves to be deceived in this way and to act against the gospel. Well, Anti-Semitism was preached as an official doctrine of the church until 1964. Do you think that might have something to do with public opinion in Austria and Bavaria and Poland and Lithuania? There will come a time when the church will issue apologies and explanations and half-baked appeals for forgiveness for things it's still doing. I think that there will be an apology for what happened in Rwanda the most Catholic country in Africa, where priests and nuns and bishops are on trial for inciting from their pulpits and on the churches, radio stations and newspapers the massacre of their brothers and sisters. Staying in Africa, I think it will one day be admitted with shame that it might have been in error to say that AIDS is bad as a disease, very bad, but not quite as bad as condoms are bad, or not as immoral in the same way. I say it, I say it in the presence of His Grace, and I say it to His face. The preachings of His Church are responsible for the death and suffering and misery of millions of His brother and sister Africans, and He should apologize for it. He should show some, some shame. For condemning my friend Stephen, Stephen Fry for his nature 
for saying, for saying you couldn't be a member of our church. You're born in sin. He's not being condemned for what he does, he's being condemned for what he is. You're a child made in the image of God. Oh no, you're not. You're a faggot. And you can't join your church and you can't go to heaven. This is disgraceful. It's inhuman. It's obscene. And it comes from a clutch of hysterical, sinister virgins who've already betrayed their charge in the children of their own church. For shame. For shame. I don't wish any ill on any fellow primate or mammal of mine, so I'm not, I don't at all look forward to the death of, uh, of Joseph Brassinger. I don't. Or any other pope, not really. Um, except for one tiny reason which I ought to confess and share with you. When he dies, there's quite a long interval till the conclave can meet, and for that whole time, that whole interval, it's a delicious, lucid interlude, there isn't anyone on earth who claims to be infallible. Isn't that nice? <laughs> all I think, all I want to propose in closing is this, that if the human species is to rise to the full height that's demanded by its dignity and by its intelligence, we must all of us move to a state of affairs where that condition is permanent. And I think we should get on with it. Okay, thank you for having me. <laughs>